It's a real privilege to have Dr. Joshua Straub on 100 Huntley Street today. He's a professor of child development at Liberty University, an author, a speaker that travels around the world talking about some of the most important issues of our lives. He's someone I respect a great deal and his Dr. Straub. He's a, a rising academic and educator and it's a real, real privilege to have him here to talk about his brand new book. It's called Safe House and the subtitle is How Emotional Safety is the key to raising kids who live, love, and lead well. Thanks for being with us, Josh. Hey, thanks for having me. Oh, it's it's an good, honor to, good be to here. see you. So, Josh, we're friends. We've known each other a long time, and so I, I've you know relied on you a lot. You're really, really smart. You know how people work. You could have written on anything as a psychologist, and yet you chose to write on emotional safety in children. So, what is emotional safety to begin with? Well, for me. I, I, same as you, we have two little kids, and uh, when I look in those two little kids' eyes, uh, I want them, there, there's certain outcomes that we want our kids to grow up to have. You know, when we pray for them, when we parent them well, we want them to have self-control. I think of the fruit of the Spirit, right? Love and joy and peace and patience and kindness. Self-control is a really big one. The reason I focus on emotional safety is because parenting in the 21st century especially is extremely overwhelming. There's so many parenting strategies and techniques and, you know, and, and then on top of it, we have Pinterest and Facebook and all these, you know, social media sites of parents posting their do-it-yourself projects. and Everybody's know, an expert, Everybody's right? an expert and everybody's doing it. And, and you're like, which way do I turn as a parent, especially for moms who are, who are at home and just, uh, you know, overwhelmed or even moms who are working and they go home at night and they feel guilty because they're not getting enough time with their kids. They don't feel like they are. And so parenting itself has a lot of shame with it. That just inherent shame. And then when you're in the public, when you're in the grocery store and your child's in a temper tantrum and you, every eye is staring at you, you're going, oh my goodness, like... Your child grabs an apple and breaks a window <laughs> and the whole world's going yeah, crazy. And so, but you're a doctor, right? I mean, you're, you have a PhD, you, you know, in this crazy chaotic world of all these things you're describing, you could have went anywhere for the answers. Instead, you went to two different places. You went to the Bible, and you went to research. So, yeah. so what does the research tell us and as this, opposed to and, our opinion? And that's what I love about this because what the research shows is that in all of the parenting chaos, in all of those things that are out there for us, emotional safety, according to research, is the one key factor to raising a generation of kids who I describe as live, love, and lead well. The outcomes, there's not a, the breadth or depth in the research when I talk about self-control, when I talk about loving kids, when I talk about kind kids, we talk about kids. There's one research study that takes children as early as two years of age, same IQ level, and they put them, they look at these kids in emotionally safe homes, in emotionally unsafe homes. And then they look at them three to four years later. And what they find is that the kids raised same IQ in emotionally safe homes are doing better academically, they're more well-adjusted emotionally, and they have better friendships and better relationships than the kids raised in emotionally unsafe homes. The reason is because they can access more of that IQ. And so when we look at the outcomes we're looking for, that's why I focus, because when you look at it all, there's so many techniques, there's so many issues out, there's so many things we can turn to as parents. What's a way to simplify this? What's a way for us as, as shame-filled parents to be shame free and to make it a little bit simpler. It's not saying it's easy, but to make it a little bit simpler. And, and it comes do down to that posture. You do it really well actually in the book because the book is called Safe House and you're referring to making your house an emotion, emotionally safe place. And you yeah. say there are basically four walls to an emotionally safe house, to a safe house where you can raise kids in the best way possible. What are, what are those four walls? Yeah. So the four walls are uh, exploration, uh, and protection. So when you step out the front door of your house, you step out into the world, you're exploring the world. And research shows that our ability to explore, our kids' ability to explore, one research study shows that the, the more a child, the more access a child has to the home, the more self-confident they are, the more access they have as toddlers, the more self-confident they are later in life as adults. So it's okay for your kid to be like crawling under the couch seeing what's under there? Oh, uh, yeah, but, but, and, and it's okay to let your kids play outside too, but... You can let your kids play outside? We really can, it's actually important. But the reality is, is you don't want them to run out onto the street lest they get hit by a car. So the opposite wall of exploration is the wall of protection. Mm. 
we're living and it's in, like a balance. It's there, a balance, right? and we we're, tend to err on one of the, the other. Yeah, and, and 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 as you and that's what's important here is we balance these walls over time. We're living in a culture today that's overprotecting our kids, and we're rescuing them from you know when they get bad grades at school, it's the teacher's fault, right? And so we're overprotecting, we're rescuing our kids, and research shows it's it it. it we raise kids then, the outcomes are, they're not confident. They don't believe they have what it takes when they hit life's consequences. So it's important that we balance those walls of exploration and protection over time. The other two walls are grace and truth. They so, so exploration and protection. Yep. And then the other two walls of the house, grace, grace and, and truth. truth. Grace is loving your child for who they are, unconditionally. It means not being mean and nasty, even if they're being mean and nasty to you, always leading with grace. Truth is loving them enough to not leave them that way. Truth is allowing them to experience the consequences of life and being able then to set healthy limits in such a way that they learn the consequences of life and learn how to handle them, learn how to problem solve, which is another key part of the brain that is established and developed in an emotionally safe home. So as someone's watching us talk right now, right? and. They're actually barely watching us because there's 14 kids going crazy, you know, in, in, in the background. Yeah. And so take what you're saying for a moment from theory to practice, right? So as that mom that just turned on 100 Huntley Street for a little bit of inspiration and encouragement today yeah, yeah. Is, is right now in the middle of chaos. And here comes Dr. Straub. Welcome to your living room. <laughs> what do you say? Well, and here, here's one of the biggest things. I'm on this parenting journey with you. Right, We're, I, My whole heart is to come around parents and say, hey, let's do this thing together and let's raise a generation of kids who live, love, and lead well. That practical part is this. You don't have to be perfect. You do not, the Bible doesn't tell us to be perfect parents. Research doesn't tell us to be perfect parents. In fact, one application today is that research shows that if you get this right just two out of five times, you're doing well as a parent. Just 40%, two out of five times. And so, the research says that... I like research like that, right? It's great, right? It's right. Like two out of five, I it's can do a, that. It says the <laughs> ultimate of relationships is a word called repair. Hmm. You know what the Bible tell, calls it? Forgiveness. Hmm. And it tells us to practice it a lot. So when you mess up, when you scream, when you get angry, when you do say something to your kids that you regret, ask for forgiveness. Say you're sorry. Be specific about the offense and then write it. Because what you're doing then is you're showing your kids, number one, that they don't have to be perfect, but you're also showing them how to write it when they're not. No, this is, this is really interesting because I, I think as I, I've, I've often taught you know, that uh, when you get married, it reveals all your, you know, sort of all your weaknesses. They come in glaring form. And just when you think you've got all that sorted out, oh right, goodness. you have kids and then you realize you're still Satan inside, <laughs> oh right? I mean, it's, 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 you struggle with this. I mean, it's a really liberating thought, what you just said a moment ago, that if you yeah. just get this right two yeah. out of five times, your kids are going to be okay because sometimes we're just too hard on ourselves. Absolutely. And, and with parenting already being such a shaming task, such a shaming job, if you will, in our culture today, it, it just frees you up to be able to be present with your kids. And that's what's important, that emotional presence, even when, especially when they're under stress and duress, that's what's most important. And the more we know our own story, because we're co-authoring our kids' stories, that's a big part of this. The foundation to those four walls is a secure parent, the ability to be present with our kids, to know our own stories well, because mm -hmm. our kids' stories start in the home. So in Safe House, you talk about being emotionally present, not, not just present, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so let's flip the coin to the other side. So what does a unsafe house, what does an emotionally insecure house look like? Yeah. I have a um, great example of a dad who called me uh, not long ago. So, uh, daughter was 14 years old at the time. She'd come home and asked him to go to a Friday night football game. And he said, no. And she looked at him and she said, dad, I hate you. Hmm. And if you have a teenager, you, you probably have experienced this before where the teenager rebels or talks back. An emotionally unsafe parent in that moment could look like this. Go to your room. I never want you to say, speak to me like that again. I'm taking your phone for a month. You're not hanging out with your friends for a year, right? It's punishing that emotion. Hmm. Uh, another emotionally unsafe response could be, it's minimizing it. It's just a Friday night football game, who cares? Another one would be dismissing it. You know, don't be mad at me. The emotionally safe parent, 
gets down on one knee, I, I use the posture. It's the posture from which we parent, not the techniques that matters most is the mm. key phrase that I use. Most safe parents will get down on one knee and lean into that daughter and say, what is it about that Friday night football game that matters so much to you? And, and the reality is, and we're not, it's not that we're dismissing the way that the child disrespected the parent. We're going to address that. But when you lead with truth, in that moment, in that moment, that stressful moment, when you lead with truth without grace, it's received as condemnation. Hmm. And when I've been condemned or ridiculed or shamed, it never motivates, motivates me to want to be good or do good behavior. But when we lead with grace, Bible says, Peter says, be stewards of God's good grace. Hmm. It says there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. When we lead with grace, it calms our child's brains in those stressful moments. Paul says this in Philippians 4, be anxious for nothing, seek the Lord in prayer and supplication, make your request known to him, and his peace, which surpasses all understanding, will keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Hmm. And it's not until then that he says, finally, brothers, think on things that are excellent and pure and worthy and praiseworthy, right? He understood that when we're anxious, we can't think straight. So we address the behavior after we've sat with our child and really met with them. The issue with this daughter was she had been rejected by a group of friends the entire school year. She had seen on Instagram and Facebook and others mm -hmm. places where they had been rejecting her and doing things. And this was the first night they, they invited her to be a part of something. Her. They finally invited her. Now, this is a, a so, really, really a practical book, an impactful interview, and we appreciate you. Hey, thank you so today, much for Josh. having me. It's an uh, honor. And we appreciate you uh, tuning in. The book is called Safe House by uh, Dr. Joshua Straub. You can go to safehousebook.com. And, you know, I, I bet, actually, that aside from the parents that are listening and just got a shot in the arm, some, some tips, some advice, and, and a pretty liberating thought, I think, that you just got to get it right two out of five times, you know, okay. But I also bet there's some parents that are thinking of this a little differently. You were that little girl that Dr. Straub had just talked about, and you had that experience as a child, and you're still affected by that you know, in some way. And um, that's why we have a prayer line, actually, at 100 Huntley Street, because we want to bring you with us in this journey. We bring you great guests and great content, and that's not enough. We want you to come with us. And so if this uh, interview impacted you in any way, you just want to talk to somebody, pray with someone, you can pick up your phone right now. You can call 1-866-273-4444. God bless you.